In the following, let us study space efficient bee trees via load balancing. This is joint work together with Tomohiri. Imagine that you want to store n keys and each key takes k bits. And you want to store these n keys in a data structure that supports the following operations. The first operation is predecessor. So given a key k, you want to find in your data structure either the key k if it is present or you want to retrieve the key that is the next smaller one closest to key, the key k. Additionally, we want to make this data structure dynamic and that we want to allow to insert and delete a key. In this talk, we don't focus on the deletions because they're mainly symmetric to the insertions. We just have to tweak a little bit the bounds to get the same space and time complexities. This data structure is commonly called predecessor data structure. And there are a bunch of predecessor data structure already known. And I just highlight in the related work those that are closely related to our approach. Note that the year is not, sort uh, is not sorted. So we sorted these related works according to the space and then subsequently according to the operational time. All these approaches work in the world ROM model. So we start with Pretzel's solution that takes 2nk plus some low order term. But you know that you have n keys and each key takes k bits. So ideally you want to store all keys in n k bits plus some low order term. So this 2 is disturbing. And there is a data structure from Gonzalez and Navarro that exactly gets this bound of n k plus some low order term. And these two work in logarithmic time. So the operational complexity is basically for all three operations in the previous slide the same. Build, building on that, he and Munro could improve the operation time to log n over log log n. And another approach back again to standard log n time is from Franceschini and Grossi, which has an improved low order term of just log n. But they use a stronger model in that they allow a real log operation in constant time. So you can extend or shrink an array in constant time. While in the WordROM model, if you do it naively, you would first create the new array with the desired space and then copy, which again takes time. In our approach, we just use the standard RAM model, have this logarithmic time, but get nk plus order of nk over log n, which is an improvement over the square root of log n up there in these two approaches and also into the approach of Pretza. But Maybe you think, well, it's just logarithmic time. Why not log n over log log n time? Well, we can do that, but that's in our archive preprint where you can read it. Another thing you might wonder is why didn't we look at uh, the compression of these keys? So we assume here that the keys are not compressible, so we want to store them plainly. There are scenarios where this make sense. For instance, if you think about uh, programming where you don't want to store your objects but pointers to these objects. And these pointers are addresses that get assigned more or less randomly by the operating system. So if you sort your pointers according to the dereferenced objects, not according to the addresses, because you want to do the predecessor on the actual objects, then you end up with, if you sort them according to this order, you end up with a list of these pointers. And the list looks arbitrary if you just look at the addresses stored there. So in general, 
this would give you an incompressible list. Now, what did we use for getting this space and time complexity? Well, I already highlighted in the title that we used B-trees. So B-trees are standard data structures in database systems and they're practically more efficient than binary search trees due to data locality. We just briefly review what a B-tree is. Like down there, a B-tree has um, internal nodes and leaves and the internal nodes have pointers to the, uh, to the children, while the leaves don't have the pointers. And the key concept of the B tree is the occupancy, which is the number of stored keys in a node, which ranges from t half to t, where t is a chosen constant. If the occupancy gets violated because we inserted or deleted a key, uh, then we have to take action and we either split it node into two or we merge two nodes into one. In this talk we don't just focus on the standard B tree but also on its two variations the B plus tree and the B sharp tree and here we use a combination of these two in this talk. Now to give you a concrete example here we have a B tree with t equal to 3 which means that the internal nodes have two or three children and the leaves have two or three keys. And you can see that you often have the case that you have free capacity like here you can still store an additional key. Now what is the difference between the standard B tree and the B plus tree? In the B plus tree you don't store the keys in the internal nodes, but comparators for guiding the search from the root to a leaf. And the leaves store the actual keys. So why does it matter? Because when you update, you can choose your comparator arbitrarily as long as the navigation still works. So what does that mean? So first, uh, for the B tree, if there is a 3, this means that all keys of at most 3 go to the left. Then this means that all keys of at most 7 go to the left, which means that all keys that are strictly larger than 3, but at most 7, are going to the middle leaf. And therefore, for the comparator, you can store, for instance, here instead of 3, 3.5, and it still works because uh, 3.5 is still less than 4. Now, to keep things small, we don't want to work with these numbers, but I just want to show the occupancy based on the filling of a node. And with that, I want to briefly review what the insertion does for the B tree. So given you want to insert a new key, then you do the predecessor search, which guides you from the root down to a leaf, which kind of works similarly to a standard binary search tree, but now you have multiple choices, which uh, child you have to take, but it's basically the same. And if we assume that we insert into a non-full leaf, then we just add this key to this leaf and we're done. Now if we assume that our leaf is full, then we do the split in the standard B tree. So the node gets split and we have two new leaves with half of the occupancy. Now what happens if the parent is also full, like in this example here? If we add now a new leaf, a new key to a full leaf, then if we now split this leaf into two, then we need again, like in the previous slide, to add a comparator and a pointer to the parent node. But 
it cannot longer store that so it's overflowing so well, we need need to take action now there so it's recursively so we do the splitting and recursively climb up until either the B tree property is satisfied or we reach the root now you can see that the occupancy gets rather low and actually there are is a worst case where you just have half of your nodes full like down there even if both trees have the same amount of keys stored in the leaves you need on the right hand side the double number of leaves so in the worst case it's 2nk bits for the leaves and therefore because the number of leaves is n times t half which is in this worst case then the internal nodes are order of n over t squared and because an internal node stores has at most t children it stores t pointers and t comparators so order of t log n bits and if you multiply that with n over t squared you get this number of bits for the internal nodes but our aim is to get rid of this 2 to get down to nk and to get that to a low order term of order of small o of nk though for the first thing so to get it to a lower order for the internal nodes we need to tweak this t by increasing the capacity of the leaves and for to get this 2 to get rid of to get rid of this 2 we use a technique from the b star tree so in the b star tree the idea is that each leaf has a designated sibling called a body in this example these two nodes are bodies and the right node is a body of the middle node so when an insertion happens for a full leaf then this full leaf checks if its body is also full if the body is not full then it shifts a key to its body in this case because this is the succeeding leaf it shifts its smallest key to the left leaf and because now the contents changed we need to update the comparator in the parent which is done on the right hand side finally if also the body is full then we do the split but because we have this guarantee that at the split we have always two full nodes full leaves that the capacity the occupation rate uh, after a split is at least two third so this is better than one half for the standard b plus tree and the question is can we generalize this idea and our trick is that we use a generalization from one body to order of log n bodies and secondly just previously hinted we increase the capacity of the leaves to store b equals to w log n over k bit the uh, keys where w is the mesh invert size in bits with the following constraints that first we want to store a key in a mesh invert or multiple keys and this is the general assumption that our problem size fits in the mesh invert and the last one is that we don't want to have too few keys so we want at least as many keys such that we can define the bodies meaningful so meaning that the multiplication of this log n times b is a lower bound of the number of keys we want to handle if this is not satisfied we need a different data structure which we explain in the paper which shows with which we can show that we again get the same complexities our key in 
our data structure is the following invariant. So we obey the following invariant for a given constant c that is at least 1. And it states that among c log n assigned bodies, which are neighboring leaves, of every non-full leaf, there is at most another non-full leaf. So in this example down there, we focus on this node and we assign it C log n bodies. In this picture, it's one, two, three, four bodies. Note that neighboring doesn't mean necessarily that it's uh, a sibling leaf. It could be some somewhere more apart, but still in the successive vicinity. Now, how can we obey this invariant? Given that we insert a new key, if again the leaf is not full, then it's easy to just make it fuller. If the leaf is full, but it has a body that is not full, then shift the a key along the line of the bodies until it reaches this non-full body. So in this case, we shift a key to the right body, but it's full, so it shifts recursively again a key to the right until we find this body that is not full. Finally, if we insert into a full leaf that has no non-full body, so all bodies are full, then this leaf is split into two. But the nice thing is that after the split, the invariant still holds because we just introduced two non-full leaves and all other leaves in this vicinity were full. Otherwise, we would have found the non-full body. Now, having this invariant, we can increase the lower bound on the occupation rate, which is now at least c log n minus 1 over c log n. And to see that, we remind that a leaf stores between t half and t keys, but within this range of c log n consecutive leaves, there are at most two that store less than t keys. So ideally, a full occupation means that in this c log n range, each leaf has t keys, so it's t c log n. And what we achieved is this lower bound of stating that c log n minus 2 have t keys. So this minus 2 is are these two. But these two have at least t half keys. So we add them here. And if we sum that up and divide by that one, we get the uh, occupation rate. Now, having the occupation rate, we can state that the leaves use at most nk times the inverse of the occupation rate. And if we use that formula we um, for c log n, we get down there. And now we substitute the c uh, with this minus 1 to the big O. And we observe that we have already obtained our space goal if we can bound the number of the space required for the internal nodes. For that, we increase the capacity of the leaves. So first, a leaf had t half to t keys, but now we say that it has b half to b keys, where b is um, w log n over k. Then in the previous mm, formula some, some slides ago, we stated that the number of internal nodes is order of n t squared, but one of this t is now, has now become a b, so it's n over t b. And we replace the b here to get that. Again, an internal node stores t log n bits, so the multiplication of that with that gives us order of n k over w bits in total for the internal nodes. So we can see that this one is dominated by this term for the leaves already, so we obtain our final space. The remaining question is, 
what's about the time. So shifting keys in these large leaves can be problematic. So because if we represent the leaves with our area, with a plain array representation, does it mean that, for instance, if we want to shift this rightmost key to the next body, that the body has to make space at its left end, so it has to shift all its keys to the right, which takes order of b time naively, such that we get this free space and then we can move this key to the head of this array. To make that faster, we can use ring buffers, which use pointers tail and head, such that we keep track of where the um, where we can prepend and append dynamically in constant time. So this shifting means just we take out that part and put it at the head of the other body. And this works in constant time. However, this is not the full story. Because first we need to do that until we find the shifting, until we find the body that is not full. So we have a lot of shiftings, but it's spun up by C log n, because that's the number of bodies you can have. Now another problem is that the first insertion at the first place can take part arbitrarily in this uh, ring buffer of this leaf. Not just at the head or the tail, but somewhere in the middle or somewhere else. And for that, we still need to do this naive shifting inside this ring buffer. But for that, we can use um, word packing by packing W over K keys into a mesh word. And then this Special insertion gets order of log n time since uh, ring buffer stores um, most b keys. And if we multiply that with the inverse of that, then we get the log n. So in total, we have for this step log n plus we have c log n bodies, which we have to shift at most, but all these shifts take constant time. So in total, it's order of log n time. And that concludes this talk. What we already did is an enhancement. So we enhanced the B tree in that the internal nodes can store aggregated values like a prefix a minimum or a maximum of the keys in their subtree. And the idea was that we want to retain the space and time complexities in that case. In our full paper on archive, we additionally got an improvement of the time complexities into log n over log log n by using dynamic fusion trees. And this also works for the aggregated case, but there we need some certain constraints for these aggregated values. Finally, also I said that we do not care about the compression, we can actually compress. And we use a technique from Blandford and Blalloch and we get n times something based on the maximum key we want to store over n times a plus order of n bits. And finally, we could show that our approach works in the external memory model with the th same number of IOs as the classic B tree with a zeta log Bn, where B is a block size. So in summary, we proposed a succinct B plus tree variant where we generalize the B star tree technique from one body to order of log n bodies. The idea was that we increased the capacity of the leaves and we used ring buffers to represent the leaves for shifting the keys efficiently. Our result is that we got nk plus order of nk over log n bits and order of log n operation time. Thanks for listening and any questions are welcome.